Christopher Yard, aka John Christopher, was a British science fiction writer born in 1922. Probably best known for the novels for the cancelled 80s Tripods BBC TV series. In 1970, Colonel Wilde's UK US science fiction drama No Blades of Grass came out, based on John Christopher's excellent The Death of Grass from 1956. In the novel, a new virus strain from China infects the rice crop and causes massive famine worldwide. After the introduction of a new pesticide, the virus mutates and now infects the staple crops of Europe, while Australia and America seal themselves off. The end time scenario classic is set in London and follows the struggles and escape of an engineer who tries to reach his brother's safe potato farm with his family and friends. While anarchy reigns in the streets and the government reduces the population with curfews, martial law and hydrogen bombs in major cities. So quite similar in human measures for their own power preservation as with our governments, which in the book are held responsible for their actions and get punished. Obviously the science fiction fantasy element here. The story from the 50s has many parallels to current events in 2020. A virus from China which is top down at the beginning and then spreads worldwide. An ineffective vaccine has to be developed by the western countries which even worsens the situation. The reduction of the society as final solution and then the final solution so exactly what the government measures cause already now with the weakest especially the elderly maybe we shouldn't call the vaccine the final solution and what bill gates and psychopathic pals already announced openly new vaccines healthcare reproductive health services we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15% without getting arrested since they are above the law Food rationing, travel bans, curfews, censorship and restriction of freedom of speech, in this case claiming there is a virus, is considered fake news since the danger in the story is real. And the government of course wants to hide it at all costs to maintain law and order, which makes sense. And not as with our freely invented pandemic with no real virus, therefore hardly sick or dead people, except those on television and the media with fake numbers, and fascist censorship discrediting critics, putting people in the psychiatry for no reason like in the Third Reich and in some countries even deportation of the people who dare to address this. We already have built here again camps aka vaccine centers which would be unnecessary if there was really a deadly danger. Many hospitals and doctors offices would not have to close for lack of customers and people would go voluntarily to the doctor and not as now for fear of harassment and reprisals hide at home and suffer or even die over real diseases. The embarrassingly gimmicky in front of and behind the camera completely miscast horrible Scott junk alters without reason the original story and leaves out important characters, drops any character development and pretty much all interesting aspects of the novel, like the highly intelligent dialogues of the two main characters, but includes a lot of archive material at wood style, looks and sounds partially like a Monty Python sketch in series performed by retards without punchline, can't convey the global scale of the events at any second, has an unnecessarily explicit rape scene, annoying birth scenes and so on. In 1984-85-25 half-hour episodes of the Australian-UK science fiction series The Tripods conquered TV for two seasons. It is based on the first two books of John Christopher's The Tripods trilogy of the same name from 1967-68. All three books also appeared as a comic serial in the US youth magazine Boy's Life between 1981 and 1986. Part 1, The White Mountains, is called here in Germany The Three-Legged Monsters on Earth Course. Uh. First off, nobody comes flying to Earth, they are already here. The title fits rather to the prequel fourth book from 1988. Second, that there are aliens at all is a reveal in the second book. 
so as usual completely unnecessary spoiler. In the story, life is largely light in pre-industrial times. It also reminds a bit of the Middle Ages, but small artifacts from the modern age are still used, such as watches. And all adults, by using implants called caps, which suppress curiosity and creativity, are under control of the tripods, gigantic three-legged walking machines. Their pilots are later identified as alien beings, the masters. The protagonist, Will Parker, a 13-year-old village boy in England, harbors subconscious doubts about his impending cap day next year, which are reinforced by an encounter with a mysterious man with a fake cap. He encourages him to escape across the channel through France to the White Mountains, aka the Alps, to join the resistance. Will is accompanied by his cousin Henry and later by a French teenager named Jean-Paul, nicknamed Beanpole. In the story, the friends split up shortly before the end because Will is considering staying thanks to a girl at a castle. She later willingly joins the tripods since she has a cape. Will, while trying to catch up with his friends after being captured and letting go for no reason, unwittingly gets a tracking device implanted. Henry and Beanpole remove the device, are attacked by a nearby tripod, which they are able to destroy with hand grenades kept from the destroyed Paris and the three join the resistance. The TV series has some, at the time even for the novelist, incomprehensible additions, but the cast is mostly passable, the Beanpole actor delivers by far the best performance. The character of Will, on the other hand, is completely miscast, and the stretched script combined with a sleeper performance makes him seem like a selfish, complaining, constantly sick, whiny baby who is only there to stop the others and bring the plot to a halt. The story from the book goes on for just three or four episodes. The rest is completely made up, which is devastating for the pacing. A reason why many critics complain the story is slow and boring, like the annoying Black Guard aka Tripod Gestapo. The insertion of more characters, unnecessary relationship nonsense and annoying storylines that lead nowhere to never be mentioned again. And the repetition of the Royal Castle adventure, told in reverse this time, bourgeois style with the women Winyard, where now Beanpole and Henry are allowed to fall in love and have to be persuaded by Will to move on. In 1985, the BBC initiated the youth magazine Beep with further adventures of Will and Friends, starting during the fourth episode in the destroyed Paris. The story was never completed, however, as Beep was destroyed itself, uh, I mean cancelled after 20 issues. Part 2, The City of Gold and Lead, an allusion to the golden color of the Massa cities and the leaden weight of the increased gravity, is called here in Germany The Secret of the Three-Legged Monsters, clearly from someone with a working cape on his empty head. Head. Will wins as a boxer together with a German boy, Fritz, as a runner, the competitions and they infiltrate a tripod city on behalf of the resistance, where they collect information pretending to be slaves. Inside the city, the boys discover the operators of the tripods, whom they refer to as masters. Male humans are enslaved in the cities, while beautiful women, as well as plants and living creatures, are killed and kept for the masters to admire or to use as toys. The slaves have to use breathing mass to survive in the alien atmosphere, but are quickly exhausted by the higher artificial gravity, have an extremely short lifespan of only about two years, resulting in a ritual suicide, and therefore must be replaced regularly. Will unveils a plan to replace the Earth's atmosphere with the toxic air of the masters. He kills him, escapes with Fritz, and returns with outside waiting Beanpole to the White Mountains. In the TV series, as usual, there are a lot of completely unnecessary additions. The annoying black guards are back since they didn't suck enough in the last season, this time even as a faction who have some kind of say, since this makes total sense especially with enslaved people without free will. The Cognosks, spiritual life forms far superior to the masters themselves, aka omniscient smart asses and deus ex machina for the plot, which gets even more unnecessarily overcomplicated and further away from the book plot than the distance from earth to the master 
fastest planet, which in the series is called Trion, and is, only God knows why, now the center of a triple star system. In the book, sunlight is harmful for the masters. Also, they don't look like the stupid vehicles in the original. And why should they? People don't look like cars either. They are also, for whatever reason, female servants. The masters in the TV series also don't need to eat, sleep or drink, don't breathe green air or prefer the high gravity and temperature of those in the book. And strangely enough, don't have names anymore, but are called like the address of their quarters? One of the few areas where they can move at all, while most of the dome is populated by humans? Although here again two thirds of the episodes are padding pulled out of the head, the audience was made to believe there was no money for season 3. And obviously no time to give the interesting and important information how the hell the masters were able to conquer the earth in the first place. Will is told this in the book by his master quite casually. The invaders used the already existing TV signals to hypnotize their victims, just like in They Live, coming soon also on your screen. Described in detail in the prequel When the Tripods Came from 1988, fearing humanity's technological potential, the masters unable to defeat them in a conventional war, hypnotized people through a series called The Trippy Show and later used the caps to control them permanently. As in the original trilogy, the narrator is again an English teenager. After they lost the last battle against the tripods, he flees with his family to Switzerland, which has resisted longest. When the Swiss are finally enslaved as well, his family forms the White Mountains Resistance Movement. The book is very good as its predecessors, extremely critical of the media and has very obvious allusions to the by order intentionally sabotaged TV adaptation. In the final episode of season 2, Will and his friends find the resistance headquarters destroyed and the tripods aka the assholes from the BBC executive level have won. We have very similar unqualified overpaid from compulsory fees finance stupid fucks at our propaganda state broadcast here in Germany. And like in England people get sick of these government funded criminals and like me stop paying the TV license fee. The DVD box set includes the soundtrack of the third season and a booklet with an interesting summary of the planned but never realized episodes. Which is sweet, but I really don't care. They had their chance and wasted at least half of the series with padding nobody asked for. In what I consider the only real sequel, part 3, The Pool of Fire, here in Germany the downfall of the three-legged monsters, uh, whatever, Will and Fritz travel around the world to organize the resistance against the tripods. Through a captured master they discover that alcohol, precisely German schnapps, has a strong super effect on them and use this knowledge introducing alcohol into their water systems. However, the attack on the last city in Central America fails, but they can succeed by using hot air balloons and newly developed bombs. A few years later, the atmospheric spaceship destroys the remains of their cities, disappears and is never seen again. The saga ends with the aliens falling apart, nationalistic hostilities and each country goes its own way. When I watched the cancelled TV series back then as a kid, I naturally loved it as much as anyone and still recommend it today as a must see even if it can't keep up for a second with the much more intelligent books. When it comes to tripods, often the Brave New World by Huxley is thrown into the discussion, which is very short-sighted, since Huxley's world evolved voluntarily, not by force, brainwashing and hypnosis. Tripods goes clearly more in the direction of 1984 and has similarities with body snatchers, and also what is currently happening. The brainwashed believing slave cap carriers resemble in their behavior, not without reason, the current slave mask defenders. Also, the aliens recognized early on that the key for the total control and enslavement of a society lies in the influencing of the children and youth, for example by using the media. The same happens also today by our synchronized mainstream. Combined with state-organized terror, nonsensical distance and stay-at-home rules, mandatory slave masks and parents who sometimes from sheer stupidity but more often from fear of reprisals duck away while their children are just reprogrammed by the regime in front of their eyes wide shut.
In 1986, the six-part dystopian German TV series Each 55 Minutes, The Guardians, based on John Christopher's same name novel from 1970. Set in the year 2052, The series uses a new time system and takes place in the year 84. It depicts an authoritarian England on the surface divided in two distinct societies, separated by an artificial barrier, a closely guarded fence. Crowded neighborhoods and technology everywhere make up the Cunt Herbs, while mansions and rolling landscapes, typical of the 19th century England, make up the counties. The titular guardians are basically a secret third faction that makes decisions in the background. Comparable in our society to the deep state. The series is more or less quite faithful to the original, but has some changes and additions that, similar to the changes in V as in Vendetta, lead to the plot having a disturbing amount of overlap with current events. In contrast to the more subtle novel, it shows the canurbian part of society directly as a totalitarian surveillance state with cameras everywhere, surveillance headquarters, political assassinations and so on. The artificially propagated phobia the way you waste my juice, there's no excuse and no amuse too much. Of alleged germs and bacteria leads to the fact that the food comes only from the microwave, things are disposed and not reused, lessons only take place with video, books are seen as bacteria spreaders, but critical books are on the index anyway and the last libraries are about to close. Questioning things, curiosity are generally not wanted and so on. Some totally brainwashed idiots even walk around with masks on all the time. But even in this dystopia they know masks are useless and therefore not mandatory. People generally distrust each other and for the most part ensure through fear and conformist order following that nothing changes. The story follows a young con urban orphan named Rob who flees to the county after his father's death. He's hidden there by a noble family and taken in with a false legend. Experiencing life in both worlds, uncovering unpleasant truths and choosing sides in the end. Novel and series are more important and topical than ever. From my point of view, absolutely insider tips for different reasons and even slightly different plot. In 1987, the very recommendable German science fiction movie Empty World filled the small screens, based on John Christopher's same name novel from 1977, in which a teenager is one of the few survivors of an illness that rapidly ages almost all of humanity to the point of death. More on this in the thematically similar upcoming The Quiet Earth special. In 2012, the US science fiction schlock High Moon, supposedly based on John Christopher's The Lotus Caves from 1969, came and went as a pilot for a TV series that was thankfully never made. In the usual excellent young adult book, two teenagers in a lunar colony of 2068 on an unauthorized excursion discover a missing early lunar settler, who has been rescued by an intelligent alien life form that looks like a plant. They manage to flee from its guiding care. The boy decide to protect the being by concealing its existence. The novel is about free will, independence and the conflict between benevolent authority and individual conscience. In the sci-fi channel crap, which has the balls to call itself an adaptation, the moon is divided into five zones, obviously referring to the nuclear powers, at least the official ones you can look up in the newspaper, which are after some McGuffins whatsoever. The moon flower also appears. Mainly, it is about men acting like idiots, women with unlimited peri power who are important because script says so, and a lot of plot separated gayness powered by forced diversity. Too much. 
It seems as if they got a Rembrandt picture as a present and smeared all over it. If people now inevitably think of fake Dreck Discovery, see also the same name Grant, uh, I mean fair and objective review, they are much smarter than those retards here. Since wannabe director Adam Kane and hack screenwriter Brian Fuller showed also in STD their lack of talent and needy bowing to the now standard SJW woke culture fascists who rule Holy Woke. Thank you.